Hello. Um, I wrote this today, and I haven't had any nicotine, so I'm going to be a little angry. Um. <laughs> so I'm Sun Kang. I'm a software engineer at Retail Me Not, a local awesome company. They don't know I'm actually here, so um, I'm not, I, didn't, I didn't put anything affiliation on the slides. I want to talk about what we're doing with Terraform and why I hate CloudFormation. Um, I was going to talk about like our SRE implementation, but I, don't, I can't put that in five minutes. Um, these are some of the techs we're using. We're on an AWS stack. We use everything from Java, Python, Node. Everything's Dockerized. Um, we're starting to use Terraform. Just want to throw that on there. And we have a bunch more. We use Clojure, Scala, all, everything. Come on. Come on. Tail recursion is good. I'll talk slower. OK. So. This is an error I've seen in CloudFormation a lot, and it's caused me like nightmares. Um, CloudFormation cannot update a stack when a custom name resource requires replacing. Rename X and update the stacks again. It's whenever you have a custom name resource and you need to try to update it. Um, one issue we had was during like uh, Meltdown and Spectre. We had to update the solution stack, and we weren't able to without tearing down the whole stack. Another problem with CloudFormation is that it encourages copy and pasting, and that is bad because you have mismatched configurations everywhere, and the CloudFormation console is dog shit. It gives you unhelpful errors. Like, you don't know why a resource didn't actually build without actually like, checking into the logs. Even that, it doesn't really help you much. So we've been trying to get off CloudFormation because we want to get to a world where we have continuous integration and continuous delivery of infrastructure. You should be regularly be, regularly be proving that your infrastructure works, and you should be regularly proving that your infrastructure is deployable. These two things are very, very important. Um, so to get to that world, we've been starting to migrate our CloudFormation stacks over to, um, well, Terraform. Terraform. <laughs> Terraform. There you go. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of hope in Terraform, but we'll see how it pans out. Um, I, I'm hoping it'll solve all my problems. But um, <laughs> we'll see. But OK, one of the things I really like about Terraform, it's really easy to create modules and share those modules. You can source modules by like Git. So you can, pull, you can specify certain versions. You can specify um, like different locations which, within your Git repository. And also, it's super easy to write up modules. I just wrote up a module for standing up a um, bunch of um, oh God, RabbitMQ clusters automatically. Um, just it just brings up a load balancer, brings up a bunch of, bunch of RabbitMQ instances, and um, automatically like, puts them in a cluster. It makes it so much so easy and that simple. I wrote it up in a couple hours. Um, um, right now, we're doing a lot of like, manually bringing up RabbitMQ instances, manually like, syncing them to the cluster, manually ma managing users. That is a pain, and that is not scalable. Um, also, we, for everything, we've been writing modules, even like stuff like um, Google Groups. We've been trying to make um, Terraform modules for them, um, pager duty groups, everything. And nice thing about the Terraform tool is that when you run a uh, plan, it actually gives you an output of what it's actually changing. This is super helpful. CloudFormation, you just you shoot, and it just goes. And you don't know what it's actually doing. You have to check the actual CloudFormation console to check like if it actually succeeded, if it failed, or all that, all that other stuff. This, I can know that, hey, Terraforms are going to tear down my EC2 instance because whatever. Um, it, can, it shows you um, what kind of security groups are bringing up, what it's not modifying, and it is fast. It doesn't have to go through the CloudFormation API. It, hit, it hits the AWS API directly. That makes it so much faster than waiting for CloudFormation and its magic scripts to like, execute behind the scene. Um, and also, the important thing about moving to a CI CD of infrastructure world is that we need to start treating um, our infrastructure as cattle, not pet. Um, the problem you saw, I mentioned before about the custom name resource, um, that's not just CloudFormation's fault. That's also our fault. We were treating our infrastructure as pets rather than cattle. We were giving them custom name resources, which you typically shouldn't do. To get to the CI CD infrastructure world, we need to start, we need to be able to bring up infrastructure like on the fly, two, two stacks should be able to be running at the same time without any sort of collision or any sort of like name chasing issues. Um, it's it's kind of hard to go back and update those old CloudFormation templates um, without tearing them down and bringing them back up, up again. There's been a lot of bad patterns that's been propagated throughout the company. 
Um, we're hoping with Terraform, and you can capture the current state of your infrastructure that's deployed right now, and some other neat, um, neat features that it has, we can move our current infrastructure stacks into a better world. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs>